Hello boys and girls and everyone in between, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. Happy holiday period. This video might go actually out slightly after Christmas. I'm scheduling and sliding some things out so I can have a little bit of time off with my family and do things that don't involve Magic the Gathering or video making. Um, today I've decided to open some... Well, Christmas is about opening presents, right? And I've got some Modern Masters boosters and I'm wearing my Christmas jumper. It's a Greg's jumper with some sausage rolls on it. So if Greg's ever want to sponsor me... A big shout out to John, my admin on the Discord, who got me this a uh, year or two ago now. Anyway, Christmas is about presents, right? So there's a little gift to myself. I've got Modern Masters 1, I've got Modern Masters 2, and I've got Modern Masters 3. Now, it's the end of the year and it's a time of reflection and thankfulness and goodwill to, to all men. And like the very first video I ever uploaded was me opening like an M14 pack. The very first video I uploaded, the very first magic video I ever uploaded, followed by some standard gameplay and some other bits and bobs. And I've been doing this for a while. Uh, this is Modern Masters 1, one of my favourite sets ever. The packs hold a little bit of a retail value now. I pick up packs, rare packs and random packs and stuff all over the shop when I can. I, if I win things at events or, or FNMs, I'd store them. Um, and I've been holding on to them to Chaos Draft with a lot. And as that sort of thing is completely off the cards now, no pun intended, I thought it'd be nice to crack some now and again. Um, so this is going to be my first cracker pack video in a while where it's just singular packs. Going to crack these in um, historical order going backwards, going from Modern Masters 3 to Modern Masters 2 to Modern Masters 1. And in some ways it's a journey backwards, because back here in Modern Masters 1, I was... I was hook, line, and sinker into it. I didn't have that much money yet. I think I was a student at the time back in... I even got the date up on my computer here using, you know, the technology of Google. June 7th, 2013. Yep. Nope. Maybe. Let me find out. Steph, when did we finish at uni? Okay, when did I finish at uni? I remember when this set came out, I didn't have huge amounts of spare disposable income, so I think I drafted it like once, and then got quite jealous of people drafting it more than once, because the packs were of a premium price. Even back then, they were double, maybe two and a half times the price of a normal pack, so the drafts were very expensive. Since then, over the years, these packs got dearer and dearer, and... Well, in the first couple of years, I picked up a box here and there when I could, when I had some spare money from selling some other bits and bobs, and then draft it with friends, get them to chip in to get some of the money back in. It's an expensive draft, we can have expensive cards, but it's also an incredible draft environment, one of my favourite draft environments. It takes the best bits of Time Spiral and Law and Block, and sprinkles in a little bit of Mirrodin as well. That's one of my favourite sets ever. And then, as the story goes, this one here, not as good. It's still an exciting set to open up, but the foils were incredibly dark. It was the first time I'd realised that foils could be shit. I went to a GP and got absolutely smashed to bits across several rounds by Khans and Kiki Jikis, making rares feel a bit too powerful and maybe not like the limited environment as much. And then we come to this one where, actually, I was going to say it's a downward spiral towards the, the modern design of Ultimate Masters, but in recent years, to be fair, I loved Ultimate Masters. I thought Ultimate Masters was one of the best draft environments going. That pack is very loose. Probably American. Um, and this, this environment was great. All the flickering shenanigans and shit. So, yeah, it's a little story. We're going to go backwards through that story and talk about the contents of each pack. And hopefully, I open something exciting. There's a foil in each pack. Could even be a foil Tarmogoyf. Do you know when foil Tarmogoyf was the coolest thing you could open and no one ever talks about that anymore? So, here we have our three modern Masters boosters 2017, 2015, and essentially 2013. Or three, two, and one. One, two, three, as I call that. Go backwards in time. Let's start with the most recent. This had Restoration Angel in it, it had Fetch Lands in it. Now, one of the funniest things thinking about these sets going backwards is that <laughs> Tom McGoy got, what, three reprints across these three sets? And maybe one in another one in Ultimate Masters? Or maybe he wasn't in this one. Either way, four Goyf reprints and only one Fetch Land reprint is absurd. I know I haven't really spoken about Goyf much on the channel lately. That's not Goyf, sorry, Fetch Lands on the channel much recently, because I'm kind of sick of having to do it. But it is still ludicrous that we're still at the situation where we haven't got enough. Fetch Land reprints. It's just, it's wild to me. Uh, if you're wondering what this lovely playmat is, this is the uh, Prismatic Piper, supplied by, sponsor the channel, ultrapro.com. August Break, great removal spell. Indemnity of Acquittal, a flash, bear that protects a bear. Alvison's Pilgrim, I love me a Maladork. I love me a Maladork, and this this was part a big part of Standard when I first really started playing Standard during Unburial Rights period. Bone Splinters, yeah, pretty reasonable removal. See, all these cards are just good. I love draft environments where most of the cards are good. Fist of the Ironwood is a uh, enchantment that gives us a sapling. Gift of Ores of 
uh, is the or Zova, sorry, is the flying and lifelink enchantment. Pretty damn good and limited. What does this do? Because if you're combat, you may have target to get plus two plus zero on a four mana two two. Probably the weakest of the cards so far, but still not terrible. Attended Knight is a, a two two with first strike. Oh, I've got a bit of glare from my light. One second. There we go. I've softened the light by bouncing off of the wall. It's a professional content creator. This thing's a 2-2 of first strike that makes a 1-1 one, one soldier and ends the battlefield. A reasonable comments and Seagate Oracle and a Golgari Guildgate. And then we've got Seaside Citadel, which I think is a... It's a perfectly okay commander card. But I still think you should avoid these at all costs because I think tap lands are a trap. Agent of Masks. What does this thing do? Because if you upkeep, each opponent loses one life. You gain one life equal to the life lost this way. Again, not a terrible commander card, honestly. Uh, Wall of Frost. Oh, oh! Fetch land. Oh, rewarded. Oh, mama. That's a Verdant Catacombs right there. That is the green black fetch land. Um, a silly price right now, I'd hazard a guess. I'm going to put it up on screen, the exact price I'm not sure off the top of my head. But I'm happy with opening one of those. That's a very good thing to open. The thing about opening packs is that's always a shame because you can really just damage the investment of having a load of packs around. Because A, you haven't got them for a rainy day when you want to either sell them off or, better let yeah, Chaos Draft. And often when you crack them, the stuff inside is just a load of crap, like a load of like, junk, junk rares, right? The Verdant Catacombs. Beautiful. Also, you know what? It's not bad cardstock from the looks of things either. And then we've got a foil, hungry spriggan, and an ooze. I am very happy with opening just a verdant catacombs. Nothing wrong with that. So far, so good. As I'm collecting these cards together and getting ready for the next pack, I'm going to talk again. <clears throat> yeah, let's put all that stuff to the side. Let's put our foil here. Our rare here. So far, so good. So... Yeah, like pack one, pick one if you weren't doing money, 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 money. I'm probably going to be on Avacyn's Pilgrim, the Augur for like straight up removal. Um, or Gift of Warzov is quite a good limit, but what do you pack one, pick one from that pack? You tell me in the comment section below. Right, next up we have the, uh, the Ecologically Aware pack. It's a cardboard box with a seal tab. These were historically very defective. I remember when I was at GPU Trek, there were stories of people's cards being damaged all over the shop and having to have replacements. Um, so, satisfying to open, but wow. the fact that we haven't seen them since probably is testament to just how dumb they are. It's weird. It's weird opening a cardboard booster. Ah, is this the... Okay, we've got our token, which is the sap on I'm going to put our Verdant Catacombs on top of our pack there, actually. Okay. Skyreach Manta, the Sunburst Flyer. Smoke Braider, that's an elemental, uh, like, enabler. Vampire Lacerator, part of the Black Aggro deck. Aether Snipe, so far my pack on pick one is definitely Aether Snipe. Bouncing a permanent is so good. Is it non-land? It is non-land, still good. Wave the Alarm, reasonable token generation. Uh, a 4 2 spirit that has sacrifice it. Tonk, which is much more than one to turn. And Soul Shift 4. I think the Soul Shift deck was fun in this format. But I also like Soul Shift and Kamigawa, so maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. Smash the Smithereens, a modern and to a lesser extent a legacy all star still these days. Um, a Saproling generator. Oh, it's a 1 1 that dies and makes a Saproling. A Gust Skimmer, a 2 1 that can gain flying. The Artifact deck was a thing in this format. The Artifact deck was a thing in this format. And then we've got. Dread Drone, which makes more um, uh, Eldrazi Drones. Remand, which used to be a chase uncommon. When Remand got printed at this point in time, this was the art from the Vraska vs. Jay's dual deck, and this was worth a pretty penny. I don't know what Remand is worth these days, but that's not a bad uncommon to open, so I'm happy with a Remand there. Bestial Menace is just a bomb card, making a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, and a 3-3. Three, three. Glass Dusk Hulk is a Cycler. That's basically what it is. Bane Fire, one of my <laughs> one of my signature cards. Wow, fetch land to Bane Fire. What? If I get a sort of fire and ice in here, these packs were seeded for like this channel. Um, yeah, if you if you're new to my content, I've Bane Fired people for a lot of damage in Mono Red Tron and things in the past as well. And a foil, uh, Bubble Butt Spider, a Aqua Strand Spider. Now that foil looks really nice on camera. I think it's actually genuinely quite dark. By comparison to this foil, even the new, the newer foil, Modern Masters Three, and Modern Masters Two was notorious for having just bad foils. Oh, the cards smell good though. They have a good smell, bad foiling. 
Even with the Raman that I assume is a buck or two, this is an example of why you don't crack sealed packs, because you end up with pain fires as opposed to verdant catacombs. Okay, now up to the big boy, my favourite. The one where the real hits were Tamagoy from Bob at the time. I guess now any of the swords are good. We've got Light and Shadow and Fire and Ice getting new art in this set. Oh, it smells like a time in Magic when... Oh, it's just that... There's something about new cards. New codexes, new books for Warhammer as well. I love it. Okay. Errant Ephemeron is a suspend flying 4-4 that comes off of suspend after four turns. It's been spent on turn two. <clears throat> Great Moss was a dredge three creature because there's a dredge in this format. You name an archetype modern and it tended to have a... There's, there's, a, there's a storm variant in this format and everything. Such a good... Oh, such a good draft environment. It was actually like emulating what modern was like at the time in a draft format and on top of that it was doing what it's meant to do which was bring down the price of modern staples which is kind of the forgotten mission of master sets now fair and macabre is a 2-2 that you can discard from your hand to exile two cards from a graveyard it is a staple i cast this and i cast it i played it i activated in legacy today against Doopsal spells still died but that doesn't matter tell more expanse a reasonable card for limited and a reasonable card in commander honestly i think i refer this to the trial we saw earlier because i prefer playing with landfall strategies and, and getting things back Another part of the Soul Shift deck in Kamigara, but in this set it was just a Spirit Tribal. Was that a Spirit Tribal? Oh no, it puts our King cards back, and there's our King cards in this set. Uh, Spell Starter Sprite, there's a Fairy Tribal thing in there. Spell Starter Sprite also has had its day in the sun in some formats in the past as well, in Fairy stuff like that. Test of Faith is one of the exciting. Echo Encourage, all the Echoing Cycles in here, this is the Pump Spell version. Uh, we've got a Goblin Rogue here because Goblins, Rogues, and uh, Giants were all part of um, the format, and this is the one that reduces the cost of. Giants by one. Bound in Silence is a card that I had in the Rebel pre-con deck years prior to this being a draft set. And uh, yeah, it's basically pacifism, but it's it's for one more mana, but it's, it's Rebel. So you can tutor it up with the Rebel cards. Um, so yeah, that, I don't know. I don't know if anyone cares, but that's something that reminds me of my childhood. Vivid growth for fixing. Eternal Witness. Okay, it's a shame it's got to reach Nelson's art, but we've got Eternal Witness and Ferramacarp. Two playables. Playable on common, playable common. Dakmore Salvage, again, playable in Commander. Right, we'll come up to one more uncommon and then one more rare now. I'll focus the camera. Ugh. Okay, we actually finished the uncommons. There's only three. Oh, Vivid's an uncommon, of course. Verdaloth, the ancient, a legendary creature, tree folk with kicker. Uh, tree folk and sapphire, plus one, plus one. It's a good, uh, do you know what? I think it's a cool card. Like, this card existing makes me happy. The fact that people can build decks around this card makes me happy. The fact that I just opened it in like a, I don't know, a $10 or more, maybe $20 at this point. Booster. Oh, sorry. Wrong packaging. Booster. Ugh. That's not good. Maybe we'll make up for it with the foil. What is the foil? It's blue. It's a 4-4. Four four. What is it? Ugh. An Errant Ephemeron. That's not what we wanted. And a Worm Token. So, I guess this pack proved to you why you don't open sealed boosters. So from that pack, we've got this, this legendary tree folk rare. We've got two constructed playable cards, Eternal Witness and Ferry Macabre across different formats. And then we've got like borderline to actually relatively okay commander cards too. Spell Starter Sprite is a very specific deck, of course. But Dagbar Salvage in Gitwog, Terminal for Expansion, and get the Cares of Answer going to the graveyard. And River Grove, again, it is a tap land, um, but I do think that uh, it's an okay budget option if you're really struggling to pick up things like this. So all in all, we end up opening some really bum foils. We opened three different green and or, and or green black tokens. We opened a bunch of catacombs, which kind of like paid for the majority of this anyway, so I can't complain. A Raman was our secret rare, because it's worth more than Banefire. I haven't looked up the cost of Verdoth the Ancient, but I assume it is not worth more than a ton of witness. Would I have opened these if I didn't have a YouTube channel to make content for? Maybe. Like at a special time of year, like Christmas or with friends there as well who will like want to see this stuff. I think I love the master sets. And I still love master sets. I don't think they should be premium priced. Or if they're premium priced, they should be the cost they are now. Double masters not where masters really push the boat out. And they will keep pushing that boat until we can't get to anymore and we drown at sea like the dirty whales that we are. But I'm glad that I got to go back and Oh, smell the new card stock of sets that I haven't smelt for a few years. Or well, many years. Oh, I mean, we're getting up to... Well, this is 2013. That is seven years ago. When it's been a decade since Modern Masters 1, I'm going to feel old. And don't forget, 
I'm only 21. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane, some anecdotes, some trying to hit well, we did. Not try. We did. Do or do not. There is no try, as Master Yoda once said. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, hit the like button. Smash that bell. Tell me in the comment section below if you like this kind of stuff. Would you like me to open more stuff in future? Like, for example, something I picked up recently that I kind of want to open and talk about uh, with a bit more of a historical retrospect than this is this. I really want to go back to like one of my first magic sets, which is the Portal Period of Magic. I've got a couple of spare boosts of this as well. But, um, yeah, this is the set that really, like, started my entire journey into this game that has transformed my life and gave me a career, which is a weird thing to say out loud, on YouTube. So do you want to see me open this stuff and talk about, like, my earliest memories of magic and then what this set was for magic? Then let me know in the comment section below. I've been Vince, also it's pleasant coming on the internet. Be good to one another, and I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.